select that respond to, to these different events, right? Um, they respond by executing functions. Let's take a look at, at an event handler in action, okay? Here we have a script with just a basic function, my function. We're using the document, referencing the document object again, and then the get element by ID method with demo, right, as the ID. And then we're setting the inner HTML to selecting text is awesome, okay? So we've got an input here. We're going to select some of the text. And let me show you what happens here. We've got our event handler on select. It's set to my function. Notice that, whoops. Notice that the value of on select is set to the, the name of my function. Right, because that's the method that we want to call. That's the method, or sorry, the function that we want to execute. Um, just as a quick aside, uh, the words function and method are commonly used interchangeably throughout programming, and so it's really important that you, you definitely understand that because it can get really confusing really fast, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this demo now. Good old event handlers. Whoops, it's not there. Let me go back. I'm going to copy my code here. And how's this for cheating, guys? I'm okay with it as long as nobody tells on me. All right, so my code's pretty sloppy there, and I can take some time to reformat that, but it's probably a good idea not to because I want to be respectful of your time. So just know that uh, everything that's in the, the slide is exactly what we're running. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the browser, and let's see what happens here. Whoa! I selected the text, and it was awesome. I loved it. That was great. That's what event handlers can do. They can do a lot, like they can do way more cooler things than that. Um, but definitely keep in mind how powerful they can be. All right, so we're going back to our presentation now, and we'll get started here with uh, updating the content of elements. Right. So you've seen us, uh, you know, add new new what seems like new elements to a page. Um, now we're going to actually go ahead and we're going to change the content of the element, right? So we, we do this by using the inner HTML property, and that's basically what we've just been doing, right? Um, it can be used on any element. Um, we just go ahead and we, we set the inner HTML property to a desired string. So it could be whatever we want. We could set it equal to a method that's going to pull data for us as well, um, like we did previously. Um, we just go ahead and use the equal symbol in order to assign whatever value we want to assign to the inner HTML property. And uh, to remove content, we just set it to an empty string, right? So just a blank string. So let's take a look at our, our inner HTML demo here. All right, so all that we did here was that we went ahead, we accessed this paragraph by ID. I'm actually going to go ahead and let me do something different here. This is, this is without JavaScript. And then I'm going to just remove this script as a whole. And I'm going to show you what would happen here. We launched the browser. So this is without JavaScript. And if we add that script back in, this, this get element by ID method is going to function, right? We're gonna, gonna perform that action. Then we're going to go ahead and set the inner HTML value to using JavaScript is super fun. So if we go back to our browser window and we update it, JavaScript does that without a problem, right? Pretty cool stuff. All right. So now, lastly, let's let's add new elements to a page. Um, to do that, we use the create element method. And so there's a little bit more heavy coding involved here. But um, if we want to make elements like images appear on a screen when uh, maybe you click a button, 
uh, we're going to use the document objects create element method. And, and we also have to use, rather, we're going to create the element, then we have to add it to the page using the append child method. So if you take a look at this code over here on the right, like our JavaScript, whoops. Like our JavaScript over here in the top right, we've got a function named show image. So that function takes a couple parameters, so the source name, the width, the height of the image, and then the alternate text. Okay. The image is document.createElement, right? So we use our, our createElement method here. We set source equal to image.source, image.width is set to width, and then, of course, height is set to image.height. And then we assign the value of alt that we pass through as a parameter to image.alt. And so all of these properties of, of this, this image object that we just created are going to be stored. And then we add them to the screen using the append child method, right? And so we pass through image as a parameter there. Of course, users don't ever have to see any of that on screen. All, and in fact, if they just ask to show source, to see the source code for the, for the web page and what I'm going to show you now, all that you see is just, there's a button. When you click it, we're going to call this function, and it's going to display an image. Okay? So let's see that in action. Just going to go ahead and, and launch that in the browser. So now I click display an image, and hey! There's my dog, Stella. All right. She's the best dog model ever. Um, she's like $500 an hour in case you guys need any dog photos, just so you know. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of Internet Explorer. And we're going to keep on trucking with our presentation, OK? All right. And actually, guys, that's it. It's incredible. It's incredible. Um, makes me want to go back and take a look at my dog again, but I guess I already clicked out of Internet Explorer. Oh well, another time, right? Um, so let's quickly recap everything that we've gone over. 4.1, manage and maintain JavaScript. We talked about what JavaScript is. Uh, we talked about its functions and variables, and also some third-party libraries um, and how they can be used in order to, to make life a little bit easier for you as a programmer. Okay. 4.2, we update the UI by using JavaScript. Um, and that means that we have to locate and access elements. We have to listen and respond to events and also uh, be able and be ready to update the content of elements. So thanks again for joining me. I really, really enjoying our time together. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to module nine. And I'll see you in a little bit, OK? Bye. Welcome back to Module 9. My name is Cullen. We're here continuing our journey through, through JavaScript um, on our last leg here before we, we wrap everything up. Uh, today we're going to talk about how you can use JavaScript to create animations, um, work with graphics, and also access data. Okay? We're not going to do too many demos. Don't hold it against me. Got a lot of good information for you, though. Okay? Let's get started. All right, our agenda, we're going to talk about uh, using JavaScript to create animations, um, also to manipulate the canvas, how you can do that with JavaScript. We also want to talk about accessing data, um, transmitting data, loading and saving files, and also validating form input. We talked about that a little bit earlier. And also uh, touching on cookies again. All right. Um, animation, of course, is the movement of static images to create the effect of movement. And uh, animation can be used dynamically to move objects in the user interface. Uh, we leverage JavaScript to create pretty powerful animations. And um, like I said, I'm not going to show you a, a demo, but you do know that, that we can access individual elements using JavaScript now. And so getting them to perform actions and, and perform animations should actually be a pretty quick and easy thing. And so some of the stuff that we could talk about is beyond the scope of this course and of, of the exam. Um, but I strongly encourage you to pursue um, just, just more about it, okay? So keep that up and enjoy this animation on screen. It's a crazy star. 
I didn't do that with JavaScript, just with the magic of PowerPoint, okay? Um, learn more about, uh, about creating animations with JavaScript um, at the Microsoft Developer Network website. Um, you can go ahead and, and click both of these links. Um, this top one is really great. It's a little bit shorter, and then this second one is really good, but do be aware that it's a little bit longer, okay? Still really good. You should probably read it. All right. Um, using JavaScript with Canvas. So recall that the Canvas element is used to create a container for graphics, right? With JavaScript, you can manipulate that container and draw graphics dynamically. And so we do that with the get element by ID method, but we also have to, to, to use the uh, canvas.getContext um, method to create the object itself, right? And so here's an example of how we would do that with Canvas. We'll go to a demo in just a, demo in just a second. Um, also, there's a cool um, link to cuttherope.net um, and, and a different Microsoft course, and I had to steal it. So I, I went ahead and added it there at the bottom. Um, you can check out that game by clicking that link after you download the PowerPoints. Anyway, here we have, um, here we have Canvas, right? So we've created created a canvas element, right? We added in some, some extra text. Your browser does not support the canvas element if they're using an older browser that doesn't render canvas. Okay, we, we go ahead, we access the canvas element and store it in a, a variable, in an object C, right? Then we have c.getContext. That's that method that we were talking about earlier. Right? Um, the context of it is 2D, okay? So in, what we're going to do now is we're going to create the fill style. Okay, or rather, we're going to set the value of the fill style equal to blue so that we can draw a blue rectangle. It's really important that you, you use the fill style method before you use the fill rectangle. Think of it like this, right? You couldn't paint a wall unless you went out and you bought paint first, right? You have to have the paint before you can paint a wall. Otherwise, it's just going to not be painted. Anyway, let's take a look at this example in action, okay? So trust that all of this code is the same stuff that you just saw in the, the PowerPoint slide deck. We're gonna go ahead and launch the browser, and here, note, I've actually got two rectangles. And so it's not. I lied to you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, Sometimes I get so excited that I just want to jump ahead, but what I've done here is we've actually created two different um, canvas objects. So I'm going to go ahead and set the height of one equal to, to 200, the other a little bit differently. Um, and so now you can see here that we've drawn just, just one object. Um, you might be like, hey, why on earth do I only see, see one rectangle on screen? Well, that's because my, my other canvas object it's not, um, it, sorry, this one is the one I want to show you. Sorry, it's not calling the function. So note here, or rather on load, we're calling F1, which is our function right here. And we access the small rectangle. The ID here for small rectangle is, is where we're drawing that canvas element. This second one, we're not accessing. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and delete that from my code and I'll show you here in a second what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, go back and then 